GraphQL. Okay. Are we ready to go? Yep. Cool. OK, so uh, tonight we're going to be talking about GraphQL, uh, what it is, how to use it, and how to set it up, how to set up a simple GraphQL service with Node. Uh, so when I first started looking into this, I, I really had no idea what GraphQL was. I, I thought it was going to be a different type of database. Um, and I was surprised to learn it really has nothing to do with the database at all. You can use any database as the background for it. Uh, and it's really more like a standard that is supposed to re replace uh, REST APIs. Uh, so it's for uh, the client side more than it is for the data side. Uh, so if you're, on, if you're totally unfamiliar, GraphQL is a technology Facebook has uh, put together. They started using it in production in 2012. And uh, I learned recently that they developed it specifically for their mobile applications. OK, so um, I just want to get this out of the way. Obviously, this is heavily based off of other people's work. Um, so if you <laughs> want to learn more, uh, don't ask me. Ask these people. OK, so what is GraphQL? Uh, it's both a query language and a specification uh, for an API service. So that gets a little confusing, and we'll, we'll kind of see it based on the examples in a little bit. Um, but so in, on, in one way, it's, it's, a, it's a format for asking for data, right? In the same way that SQL, you know, you select star from whatever, um, GraphQL provides the syntax to do that. Uh, but it also provides a series of standards for how to respond when someone sends you a GraphQL request. OK. Uh, why did they do this? Isn't REST good enough? Um, they have a, a very long series of documentation about what they were thinking when they made it. It's very intricate and kind of interesting. Uh, so if you wanted to click those links, you could check that out. Uh, they kept on coming back to this main point, though. So they said, fetching complicated object graphs requires multiple round trips between the client and the server to render, to render single views. For mobile applications operating in variable network conditions, these multiple round trips are highly undesirable. So uh, all they're saying is that when you're using a REST API and you have complicated data, you're probably going to make multiple requests. Um, if you're doing that in an environment on like a mobile phone where those requests are going to slow you down, uh, you're going to have a problem. So if you can imagine Facebook data, um, there's all sorts of Tons of data in there. There's billions of users. There's uh, complicated networking of all that data. You've got posts and all that. I don't use Facebook myself, but I assume there's <laughs> all sorts of stuff in there. OK, and not to gloss over it, but so GraphQL allows you to bundle all these requirements into one request. And it's also serviced by one endpoint. And we'll see how that works. So this is what a query would look like. Um, we have posts. So if you can imagine three uh, data models, posts, people, and products. And in our little scenario, we have uh, people who are reviewing products, right? And they do a post. So your post is connected to both a product and a person. If we wanted to make a query with GraphQL, we would say posts include title and person. And within person, include their first name and their last name. It's similar to uh, a mongoose populate in that sense, right? So we're saying populate the person data in this case. Uh, in SQL, you know, it would be a join between posts and person on whatever. And in fact, it is in the background. Uh, the response would come back. It's just JSON data, essentially, uh, that's nested. OK, so how do we set this up? Uh, you can find tutorials online for any database. I use MySQL. I use SQLize as the ORM. Uh, SQLize and GraphQL have a lot kind of in sync with the way that you think about the data. Um, so that was a good fit, I found. Uh, I use Express. Uh, and then there's a kind of a plugin or a package for Express called uh, Express Gra GraphQL, which was necessary to use. You'll also find that you may need to install some React things, React DOM, and a few other things. Because um, I guess this was designed originally to 
be a background for React. Um, and then the last thing there is Graph IQL, which we'll see in a second, but it's a, an in-browser IDE. It's kind of fun. All right. So let's check out the actual code to do this and just some things to point out. Um, pretty much everything is going to be the way that we're familiar with setting up an application. Uh, the only big difference is that when we uh, go in and set up our routes, we are going to map our SQLize models to the GraphQL queries. And basically, you're telling GraphQL how to respond with the data based on your models. So all the other stuff is, is, is the same, right? So we have this simple setup here. We've got three models. We have person, post, and product. And keep in mind that SQLize lets us associate these um, natively, right? So you tell SQLize. So it's like there's just three layers, right? There's your database. There's SQLize, which is an abstraction over your SQL. And then now there's GraphQL, which is a further abstraction over that. Uh, but so we've, we've linked um, person, let's see, has many, mod uh, has many posts. Uh, post belongs to person, belongs to product. And uh, product has many posts. Uh, so the server side over here is pretty familiar. We're just using Express, and that's about it. Um, our index here, that's just tying all these models together. And is actually, in this case, is including uh, the seeding that I did. Uh, and then the, the real important part here is this schema page, which is handling the GraphQL stuff. So basically, we are overlaying GraphQL. We're associating these models to these object types in GraphQL. And we're pretty much saying, OK, um, when I query for a person, this is what can come back. It can, an ID can come back, a first name, a last name, an email. These happen to be all the same things I had on my data model, but you could restrict that if you wanted to. Uh, and then last, you're going to say, oh, actually, you can return posts as well. And we can do that because on the person model was linked to post model with SQLize. So you'll do the same thing for posts, same thing for products. Uh, and then you have this big query object. And this is what is going to do all the work for us later. So we pretty much say, OK, what are the fields that this query object can handle? And surprise, surprise, they are people, posts, and products. Um, and then it's important we also have these uh, arguments here, which kind of control what the user can query. So we might not want them to query off of everything, just as a, a sort of security thing. Uh, but so you define all that stuff. And you'll see a lot of these um, new GraphQL lists or whatever. We also need to define the uh, data type. And we need to say if it's going to be a list or an array or however else it's going to come back. So you kind of spell everything out. Uh, and then we'll talk about these later, but the mutations are similar to post and put requests, right? So the queries are like uh, gets, and the mutations are like puts. OK, so let's say we uh, get this all going here. Um, so we're listening on localhost here. And this, this is the graph IQL. Uh, so the cool thing is that. The documentation comes, so this is a, a React sort of module. And it knows how to read our GraphQL um, Express instance and pull in its own documentation based on the query object we set up. So you can say, OK, look, there's a query. I've got my people, posts, and products. And if I click in, these are all the fields I can use. Uh, so we have some, some sample queries here. So this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, so we have posts, and we want the post title and content back. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, let's say we want to get a little more complicated. Um, let's start off here. So let's say we want people, and it kind of tells you what's going on. You can say, all right, uh, you need to return at least one uh, field here. So we'll do ID, we'll do first name. Uh, and then since people has post associated with it, we can do posts 
And then we can include uh, whatever we want from posts. So we'll do title. Is that my 10? Yes. OK. Uh, title, and let's do product. That all comes back. So last thing I know I went over, um, I think when you start to use three models here in your query, it starts to become clear uh, why this is an extremely flexible way to query data. So in this example, we have, uh, I, let's say I want to find a product, you know, product with ID 3, and I want to find all the posts that someone wrote about that product, right? That anyone wrote about the product, right? Those reviews. And then not only that, but now I want to say, OK, uh, which person wrote those reviews? And let me see all the other products that they have written reviews about. Uh, so it's like three or four layers deep here. And we just have this one query um, endpoint, but it can handle all this stuff because they're all linked. And we get this data back. And the cool thing is that we don't have to return loads and loads of data and then parse it. We just have what we want um, returned to us. So it's, it's a one query and it comes back. And the mutations are similar. Um, so I suppose that's my time. Um, any questions?